Esther Afua Oklu, originally from Ghana, came from humble beginnings. Everything she had, she worked endlessly for. Her success, wealth, and recognition. She was part of a small group of women who did many atypical things. She pushed the limits, and she was an entrepreneur. Hard work and dedication propelled Oklu to do many firsts for both women and men. Oklu was the first person to start a formal food processing business on the Gold Coast. After many trials and tribulations, Oklu finally reached the peak of her success. Instead of gloating in all her glory, she offered women in her community her knowledge and support to help them achieve their own goals. I wanted to see to it that women were equipped to help their children so they don't suffer the same hardships. Women can contribute effectively, socially, economically, and culturally, said Oklu. I'm Mike with List25, and in this video, you will find the top 25 facts about the pioneer of micro-lending and women's world banking, Esther Afua Oklu. Twenty-five. Esther Afua Oklu was born on April 18, 1919 in Peke Dezake, British Togoland. She came from humble beginnings, knowing that getting a good education could change her life. She started her school career at Presbyterian Primary School, then later studied at co-educational boarding school at Peke Blengo. 24. It's no wonder that Oklu was a hard worker. She got it honestly. Her father, George Nkelenu, was a blacksmith. Georgina, Oklu's mother, was a potter and farmer. 23. Money was tight for Oklu and her family growing up. She couldn't afford to buy food from school, so every weekend she would make the journey home. Oklu dedicated her weekends to gathering local foods and cooking meals for the upcoming week for her and her family. 22. Oklu's teachers saw something special in her. Once she got her business started, they asked her to supply the school with her jams and marmalade. She traveled to the school with her supplies at least twice a week. This helped Oklu save enough money to help further her education. 21. Oklu's grandmother sent her to a Presbyterian primary school. She quickly advanced to a boarding school in Peki Belengo. Being the excellent student she was, she won a Cadbury scholarship to a co-ed high school in Accra. 20. Back in her teenage years, when the young Oklu had the idea of her first business, her high school classmates didn't respond well. They ridiculed her and taunted her by comparing her to a street vendor with no education. Even though none of Oklu's peers stood behind her, her teachers saw the greatness she was about to become. 19. Oklu was known for being a bright young woman. Her passion and dedication towards her studies helped her excel at everything that she tried. Oklu won a scholarship to Akimoto School, where she studied for five years and earned the Cambridge School Certificate. 18. As a teenager, Oklu started her very first business with only 10 Ghanaian shillings. With less than one American dollar in the 1930s, she bought some sugar, oranges, firewood, and a few glass jars. Oklu's marmalade went for a shilling a jar, which made her a two shilling profit. It wasn't much, but it was enough to get her in the right direction. 17. Akimoto College saw all the hard work it took Nkulenu to establish Oklu's juice and marmalade business. They understood the potential the young, talented woman had to offer. Thankfully, they sponsored her in getting her diploma from the Good Housekeeping Institute in London. Oklu was honored by the prospect and was excited to further her education. 16. Oklu made her way to London in 1949 to further her education career at the Good Housekeeping Institute. A few years later, she graduated with a diploma. Deep down, she knew that her studies wouldn't stop there. She decided to take a food preservation course at Long Ashton Research Station, Department of Horticulture, southwest of London at Bristol University. 15. After coming back from England, Oklu put all her studies to good use. She decided to share her knowledge with women in her village. She taught her students everything she knew, from business skills to food preservation techniques. Her selfless attitude changed the lives of many women in her community. 14. 
Around the same time that she began teaching and mentoring the women in her community, Oklu also started giving out money. She would lend women small amounts of money to help them start their own businesses. She knew there were high risks in lending out her hard-earned cash, but helping women achieve their own dreams, to her, was priceless. 13. Oklu was the pioneer for women who were trying to do better for themselves. She started by giving small loans, called microcredit, to help women start their own businesses. The loans were small. But the difference it made was extraordinary. Eventually, she knew she had to do more. 12. In 1958, Oklu formed a manufacturer's association. With this, she helped the first Made in Ghana good exhibition get put together. She was fighting prejudice against locally produced goods. It was a fight that was worth every effort. She was able to bring awareness to an issue that needed to be addressed. 11. Oklu empowered everyone around her. She also founded two religious groups. Evangelical Presbyterian Church in Medina was one of them. Oklu formed a Bible class and served on the Synod Committee. The other organization was the Unity Group of Practical Christianity. It was associated with Unity Worldwide Ministries. 10. Oklu was the first person to start a formal food processing business on the Gold Coast. It was the business she built selling her marmalade and orange juice to Akimoto School. 9. Oklu worked hard on the fight for women, and even though you may not recognize her name, her work didn't go unnoticed. She had over 15 honors in her name. The most recent was from Google. On what would have been Oklu's 98th birthday, Google featured her in their Google Doodle. 8. All that Oklu was and did for the people in her community didn't go unnoticed. Her country loved, supported, and adored her. With the help of former president Kwame Nkrumah, Oklu became the first president of the Federation of Ghana Industries. With a higher platform, she was able to help even more people. 7. By the 1960s, Oklu's business was booming. Her companies branched out into textiles and dyes. She was employing hundreds of Ghana men and women. With all the success, she was eventually made executive chairman of the National Food and Nutrition Board of Ghana. 6. Okla grew up in a man's world and was determined to fight for women's rights. Her hard work and determination paved the way for her as a women's activist. When she reached the top of her wealth and success, she turned around to reach down for other women to join her. In 1975, she was appointed as an advisor for the First World Conference on Women in Mexico. 5. At the First World Conference on Women, Oklu discussed the importance of lending women money to start their own businesses. This debate led to the creation of the Women's World Banking, which now serves over 24 million entrepreneurs all over the world. Oklu became the first chairman of the board of directors for the WWB. To this day, that corporation helps to empower women who came from underprivileged backgrounds. 4. After dedicating her life to helping others, Oklu was appointed numerous awards. She was awarded the African Prize of Leadership in 1990. Then in 2001, Oklu was presented with the African Entrepreneurship Award for her solutions to help increase food production in Africa. 3. Oglu married her husband, Stephen Oglu, after she returned from her studies in England. The couple had four children. They had one daughter, Vincentia, and three sons, Christian, Vincent, and Stephen Jr. Oglu left her company, and Kulanu Industries, to her children. It's still in business today. 2. Oglu developed pneumonia in February 2002 and was never able to fully recover from her illness. She passed away at the age of 82. Oklu was granted a state funeral in her hometown of Pekidzake. She was deeply loved by her country. Hundreds of people gathered to show their respects at Oklu's public funeral ceremony. 1. Although the world lost Oklu, her spirit is still going strong. 
That small business she started in school in Kalenu Industries is still going strong to this day. It's a legacy that lives on and one that continues to influence and change the lives of people. Without a doubt, Oklu is smiling happily in heaven. So, who's your inspiration? Let us know in the comments below or tweet your answers to us at List25. Enjoying our lists? Be sure to click that subscribe button on the bottom right and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new ones every Monday through Friday. Share them with friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.